All right, it is time for another toy show. You may ask why I'm going. I don't know. I'm asking that too. My basement went from this to this in six short years, so I don't need any more junk. But let's see what this show has to offer anyway. This is just one of more than five areas that will have toys in them. Too many toys, I tell you. Some of the items I liked at this show were these bozo items and these wrestling figures, combo packs. Sadly, some of these guys have since passed on. Always fun to see items that you never had or you never knew that came out, like these A-Team and Rambo figures. I don't need any more board games, but if I did, this 1973 Snoopy game would come home with me for sure. Star Wars is always well represented at toy shows, but at 1,200, this item is gonna stay there. I'm only looking to spend around 200 bucks today. I love these 1970s Planet of the Apes 8 phones. It's something I'll try to eventually pick up on eBay. I love vintage advertising items, like this He-Man ad. And what girl you brought over the house wouldn't be turned on if she knew you had an Elvis fan? Hunka hunka burning nerd. Back to wrestling. I used to have a ton of these old 1980s LJN figures, but I sold off the majority of them years ago. Wrestling figures were one of the many collections I had that I had to part with for space and money reasons. You can see why flippers go crazy when they find stuff for cheap at like estate sales and flea markets, and why toys are big business for many. Look at the price tags on these things. I love it when my wife comes out to the show. It shows all the other toy geeks that I know what a girl looks like. Just look at all this crap. It's unreal. I wish I could own every Star Wars item there is. It would make me happier than Pee Wee in a movie theater. And a lot of this is, yeah, we have a lot of modern conveniences, but we still seem to live in a depressing world. So I guess we're here just trying to buy back some of the good feelings we had as a kid. All the toys and the fun memories that come along with them. And for me, that would be my Atari years for sure. That was another toy show. It's too much. It's too much stuff. Way too much. Uh, my plan was just to buy a few things. Of course, I did, and I bought a whole bunch of crap. And uh, let's go back to the fun house now, and I'll show you what I got. All right, welcome back. Like I said, if I had a million dollars, I would buy everything. There was the Buck Rogers uh, tube thing. That, you know, I'm sure it's tons of cancer-causing agents inside there. But in the 70s, no one cared, and it just uh, blow the bubble stuff from that. I would love to get that. Tape player... They had a great uh, Smurfs record player thing, uh, cocaine Ewok, who doesn't want a little Ewok wrapped up in cocaine, the WWF, WWE case, I don't know what the case is for, that would have been fun. So yeah, there was just a lot of really cool stuff if I was a rich man, I would have been coming home with, and I have no space, I have no space for any of this crap. Um, so this is what I I bought, I wanted to hope, uh, hoping to spend around 200 bucks, spend around 300 bucks, but uh you know, I got some overtimes coming up at work. It's holiday season. Speaking about the holiday season, I bought this just for a few bucks, like $2. Some guy just had it on the corner of the table. I thought it was really cool, though. Uh, Gay Blades. It's a little ice skater guy having a great time there. Christmas, 1981. 1981's one of my favorite years for life, for music, humanity, the world. 81. What a great year. I got these He-Man cards on my little shelf. Uh, I sold a lot of my He-Man figures off years ago on eBay, uh, but I did keep uh, Skeletor on Panther and He-Man on Battle Cat, and of course uh, Beastman and Ram Man also have those side. I bought these sticker cards for like $2. Sometimes they go for like $10 on eBay they'll sell for. Uh, but yeah, these little stu two little sticker cards are I'll put by He-Man and his little friend Skeletor. Uh, I bought a uh, Super Nintendo game. I'm trying to get rid of a lot of games and consolidate and only keep the ones that I really want to play because there's a lot of cool games I have, uh, like the Warriors on PlayStation, uh, Godfather on PlayStation, that I really want to start playing. I have a bunch of Star Wars games on Nintendo and Super Nintendo, Blues Brothers on... Anyway, but this was like just like four bucks, so Beethoven. It's a classic Nintendo kind of Super Mario World thing where you just travel around hitting things and hearts and but you're a big dog a big slobbering dog that's a few bucks it's worth a few bucks uh of course i have a hockey area down here that's packed with stuff i really need to go through my hockey stuff uh this is one of my favorite players steve larmer it's a patch for steve larmer there i do notice on ebay they have other players like eric lindros who i like uh and you know all kinds of players from the 92 
93 kind of era, so I will be collecting a few more of these, like uh, Jeremy Roenick and stuff. But yeah, this was just a few bucks on eBay. They go for like 10 or so, so what a bargain. This was 20 bucks on eBay. It'll go for between 10 and 20, but you got to pay that $10 shipping at least. Uh, so it's a neat little uh, hockey pinball machine. Uh, I believe it's from like 19... 60s don't know the exact year uh what else do i got oh i bought this uh cool. a lot of comic books i'm not a comic book person uh but i bought this the infamous tiger king of course if you watch my animal channel brian's out for animals you know that my uh zoological kind of career started uh with carol with carol there she is way down there in florida for eight years and we tried our best to get people away from people like joe that just use and abuse animals so he's in jail and hopefully a few of the other characters uh, that were abusing animals will be also in jail but i digress back to the toy world of course music is always a neat thing there uh, a lot of the albums i flipped through there they weren't priced too bad uh but a lot of the cool stuff was already stuff i had i have tons of albums like i don't know like three thousand albums so it's hard to find stuff that i i still want at a good price and all that anyway i picked up this pop apocalypse now great movie of course uh the soundtrack the cd soundtrack i don't have that Try to get rid of a lot of my soundtracks, but this is one I would keep. And uh, on VHS, a lot of VHSs were sold. Of course, you can get good money-ish for like horror movie VHS tapes. So if you ever see those uh, for like a quarter each or a dollar each at a state sale, sometimes you know you can. If you want to be uh, flipping some things, I don't like flipping unless unless it's something that's okay. This has been here for a while. I'll pick it up and get a few bucks for it. I don't like that aggressive flipper mentality where people run and grab everything or they pre-order a bunch of stuff they know they're not going to listen to because they just want to i've already gone on and on about flippers but how i don't really like them anyway uh what was i talking about yeah moody blues on vhs this i have a dual vhs to do a dvd machine and this could this does not have the coating so you can put it on a dvd so awesome so i'll probably just i already put it on here this magically went to here Knights in White Satin and all the others. So another VHS I found. It has the security tape, so I can't put it on a DVD. Although there are programs that you can fool everything, but I'll just keep this on VHS. M. Jackson, the Moonwalker. Now, who wasn't moonwalking in the 80s? Who wasn't? Uh, I've never seen this. I think it's like a movie that ends with a smooth criminal kind of video or something. I don't know. It's an hour and a half of uh, Mike Jackson there. Uh, I don't know when in my life I'll sit down and want to watch an hour and a half of Mike Jackson. But, uh, you know, that day may come. Who knows? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. I uh, didn't really buy tons and tons of stuff. Um, I got the X-Wing Fighter. Got it for like 20 bucks. It's about worth that. It's got stickers on it. It's got the little thing. It's got Luke in there. Um, I do need the cannons. The cannons you can get for, I mean, people 3D print everything nowadays. But you can get the cannons for like $10 each on eBay. So, of course, I need four of them. To make this complete nerd it's an okay shape i mean it's a my friend when i was a kid we play star wars and one of the first big arguments i got with anybody i was, I was like six or seven uh he was always playing this and i was always like the broken chewy because we had like a chewy with only like one arm because back then you beat the shit out of your toys and uh he and i just wanted to be the plane just once so i think i punched him or something and he told his mom and his mom was like well the plane is not yours and I was like, well, technically we're playing, and technically it's not a plane, lady. It's an X-Wing fighter, but I don't know. So, yeah, that was early childhood memory. Uh, me getting in trouble from parents to parents, because parents used to do that. You used to keep track of the kids, and you used to spank kids that weren't yours, and you used to yell at kids that weren't yours, and the world was better for it. So, parents out there, stop being wusses. Stop being wusses. Yell at your kids every once in a while. Tell me little jerks. I can play with this as long as I want. And I'm not giving you your turn. You're not getting your turn. You can play with the broken chewy arm all you want, but you're not getting this. This is mine. Mine now. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, Lando. This is one of the few figures that I kind of need. Uh, there are a lot of figures, vintage figures I don't have, but there's not a lot. That, like, there's some that I don't want. I have tons of them. Uh, I think I have pretty much Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back complete-ish. And Return of the Jedi. This is, of course, Lando in his outfit there. The little helmet. Got that for... 24 bucks that's about what it they, they go for on ebay so not bad uh oh yeah let's get into the exciting part man i thought i bought more oh yeah i did this is the uh star wars hoth play set um now this it, it was complete i don't know where i'm gonna fit this on my shelf i have no room on that shelf over there as you can see um complete it would have a cardboard at at 
I love at at it's one of my favorite machinery things from the Star Wars universe. And this cardboard at at would sit right there. Uh, on eBay, you can get these complete with the at at cardboard thing for like eighty dollars or something. I got this for twenty. And all it needs, like I said, is that at at. Um, but even if I can't find the at at for a good price, I can put little dudes here, and it's kind of fun. It's just a damn piece of plastic. All these toys are just pieces of plastic, and either people go crazy for them and they go up in value, or they're just stay stupid pieces of plastic. Uh, this you saw, and I think I included a picture of it in a video, I have the Star Wars case, and now I have the Empire Strikes Back case. I love the artwork, just check out that artwork. Is that cool or not? It is cool, for those of you saying no, I don't get what the hell you're talking about, it's not cool. It is cool. So that's a big moment here. Kiss trading cards, these, I got this pack for 10 bucks unopened. Sometimes on eBay, it's like 20 25 bucks for an unopened pack. This is Series 1 from uh, Bill Coyne, 1978. Of course, I'm a big KISS fan. I got a video on this channel about my KISS collection. Uh, and, oh. and what we're going to do, I figured what would be cool is to open this live. Ooh, live on video. I mean, you can play it back as much as you want. It won't be live. It's just... So, yeah. Pack. I figure if I open it carefully, it'll be... Um, cool enough. I mean, people are like, oh, you ruined the value when you open it, but who cares, man? Stuff is made to open. Already, I see a gene. Nice. And I'll carefully open this, because I want to be able to display the package. Ooh, it's got the gum. When I was a kid, man, loved the gum. Now, not so much. Not so much. This gum is, gum is like 30, 40 years old, so yeah. The power of gum, man. This stuff never goes away. Alright. I'll oh, we'll just leave it on there. So a uh, gene card, number 50. That's pretty cool. I like uh, have a, another gene card, number 12. Gene? Gene is the man, I guess. When you were a kid, gee, I used to be ace when we'd play uh, Kiss in the school uh, playground. I'd be ace, even though I grew up a drummer, so I should have been Peter, but whatever. Another gene. Boy, this, this pack is heavy on gene. Card 11, gene. What else we got here? There we go, Ace, card 65. Ace. Uh, Ace is coming to town and a uh, whore convention. He's signing autographs. Oops, he just died. And uh, I'm going to try to get an Ace autograph on a solo album, so hopefully I'll have a video upcoming of that. Uh, 1978, a little Peter Chris here. That's a good card. Peter. And last but not least, another group shot. So yeah, I got some, got some good cards in that. Oops, let me pick you up, Ace. Of course, the backs are really cool. Lots of info. Uh, and the big item, the big item, the magic of TV, here's the big item. The zoom in again. It'll be zoomed, it'll be, boom, it'll just appear right here. Magic of TV, one, two, three. Kapow! Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. The only item I spent over 100 bucks on, of course, my wife was watching this, I spent $15 on it. Unbelievable. But a little over 100 and, and I looked it up, couldn't find any way I found. Somebody had a promo poster. Of course, this is a cardboard display. Uh, so I figured, I don't know, you probably not, I've never seen this ever before. So, of course, Rush, Canada's best band. Um, I also love Triumph, but uh, Rush, their 11th album, Power of Windows, released October 1985. A lot of people, the 80s rush took a little time because they were used to the 70s rush. Uh, to me as well, it took a little time to get used to it. And uh, I love Power Windows. Power Windows will always be a special record for me. Uh, I have the record, I have the tape, I have the CD. The tape I brought to uh, band camp up in the uh, University of Wisconsin when I was going to high school here in Illinois. Band camp up, I brought one cassette tape, Power Windows Rush, so it always will mean to me that those 80s and going up to band camp and learning about the music industry and all that stuff. Uh, Big Money, Grand Designs, Manhattan Project, a song, Marathon, great song. Territories, great. I mean, these are educational and fun music. Uh, Middletown Dreams, Emotional Detector, Emotion Detector, Mystic Rhythms, you know, as a drummer, you love the internet, those beats and stuff. But yeah, man, great cover, great. So I don't know where the hell I'm going to put this, uh, but, you know, I don't want to put it in my front window because people think a little teenage boy, a shirtless boy, is looking at my house. <laughs> Why is, what's, don't need that. Don't need that kind of drama from the popo. Uh, but yeah, I'll find some. I, no, I won't find anywhere. I don't know where the hell I'm going to put this. Um, but somewhere. But I love Rush. Easily, uh, Rush Cheap Trick, my two favorite bands, goes back and forth. But Rush is back I listen to all day long. They have so many albums. Um, and I'm so glad to find this this promo thing from the 80s, and it's great shape. Uh, I love it.
I love it. This is Christmas for me. Hey, hope you like the toys. Hope you like seeing what you saw in the video. And thanks for watching.